All right, so today we're going to be talking about how to get your first front-end developer job. This is a no BS approach, and if you've watched my videos before, you're probably going to be familiar with my approach. But before I jump right in, I need to give a couple of PSAs in this specific corner of YouTube, like coding, web development, career YouTube. You're going to see a number of different videos that are mostly BS. The first one being how I got a job as a software developer developer in less than three months and I'm making $100,000 a year or something similar to that. Um, if you see this type of video, I would steer totally clear from it unless that person actually did do that. And if they did, that's kind of a freak case because the majority of people don't land these insane jobs in even any less than like six months, I would say. I'm not saying that this type of scenario hasn't happened before, but for the vast majority of us, it's not going to happen like that. The second PSA that I wanted to shout out is that you cannot hack your brain to learn how to code. This is another type of video that you're going to see in this corner of YouTube. Again, it's all clickbait BS. You can't hack your brain to learn how to code. In one of my other videos, which I'll link up here, um, I explained this, like your brain is a brain. You can't hack it. It's not a computer. You can certainly teach it to think like a computer, which is the basis of programming, but you cannot literally hack it. Hence why I'm saying that this type of video is clickbait, it's BS, I wouldn't buy into it. The third PSA, Haseeb Qureshi. I have two of his articles linked in the description below, but if it weren't for this person, I probably wouldn't have been where I am right now talking to you about my own journey. Haseeb Qureshi is somebody who's influential in the space. I've used a lot of his journey to inspire my own path, and I highly recommend that you read the below two articles. I think that you can gain a lot from them. That being being said, let's jump into how to get your first front end developer job. Okay, step one, understanding if this is something of interest. I'm assuming that if you have found this video and you're watching, you're already at least somewhat interested in doing front end development work as a career path. People only really see the surface level though. They see like a good salary, good benefits. You can bring your uh, dog to the office or whatever. I would do a couple of things though to really figure out if this is actually something that you envision yourself doing. The first being talk to somebody in the industry who does front end work, or it could just be any sort of technical or like coding work in any capacity. So for instance, when I was first starting out, I reached out to my uncle who happens to be a QA engineer at a tech company. Again, it doesn't have to do with front end development, but he kind of just like told me what it was like working in tech. And I was like, yeah, I mean, that seems pretty cool. And if that all sounds good to you, the second thing that I would do is hop on free CoCamp and do some front end development exercises for a couple of days. You're likely going to struggle, especially if you have little, no experience. This gives you an opportunity to just dip your toes into the water and see this is something that you might be interested in. Those are a couple of different ways to really gauge your level of interest beyond the surface level of what it looks like working in tech and working as a front-end dev or doing something in that capacity. If you pass those tests, you want to start to get that foundational skill set. I would find a free or cheap course that works best for you. Uh, I hinted at this, but I would definitely jump on free code camp or a similar website and start to work through the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and some of those framework uh, exercises and start to learn the basics. I'm halfway through this one course right now that I'll link in the description that I highly recommend. Now that we're talking about learning, you might be thinking, oh, would it be a good idea for me to go to a boot camp or go back to school? Honestly, it's up to you. Again, if you've watched my other videos, you know what I'm going to say about this. I think that it's a complete waste of time and you're further just kicking the can down the road. You're wasting more time and money and energy into something that you could just be doing on your own, but I know that everybody's different. I have a bunch of coworkers that have done boot camps and they successfully made it out and found themselves with great jobs. After you've done that, I would build two projects. You wanna build a couple of projects that focus on what your interests are using what you learned in the courses from Udemy, Free Code Camp. The next step here is getting experience. I think this is where most people get the most discouraged throughout the whole entire process, besides actually learning how to code. The biggest issue that I see with people, including myself, like four years ago, people end up shooting for the stars when they have like zero experience. Now, I'm not saying that 
you're not special and that you can't accomplish amazing things. But this is sort of tying back to what I was saying at the beginning of the video. If you have like three months or six months of engineering experience and you're only really applying to these top tier tech companies or second tier tech companies even, expecting that you're gonna get responses, don't feel surprised that you're gonna feel incredibly dejected. I mean, the data supports that you're probably going to because frankly, you're just shooting for the stars. Again, I'm not saying don't shoot for the stars. I think that there's a stronger approach and that's basically just to cast a wider net because the point is to just get literally any experience that you can right now because it's highly likely that you have little to none. You just gotta be honest with yourself. And if I had known this when I had first started, it probably would have saved me a lot of time. So you should be thanking me. Just kidding, you don't have to thank me, but you should like this video and subscribe. I'm sure you've heard of the saying, any press is good press. The same goes for any experience is good experience. You want to just get as much experience as possible. For me, yeah, maybe I was applying to like Amazon and some of these big companies, but I was getting humbled so quickly. So I changed my approach and I just started to apply everywhere. I even walked into my local Code Ninjas when I was still living in Los Angeles and I ended up getting a call back like two weeks later and I got a job there for like six months and I was just teaching kids how to code because it was better than no experience at all. Part of this is like being honest with yourself. You're gonna have to gird through to get some experience and you're gonna have to figure this out and potentially start at the bottom. Not to sound corny, but it's true. Like, I think it's really important to be humble. Okay, so now you're starting to get some experience. You're teaching kids how to code. Maybe you're freelancing. And by the way, freelancing is something that I always recommend to people who are new to the industry. It's a low barrier to entry and a great way to get experience. So if you're not having much luck getting like a nine to five job, go and freelance. Sorry, side rant. Okay, so now you're starting to get some experience. Great. You're continuing to shoot for the stars and apply to Google every other week. Here is the key. You want to adopt this third door mentality and Hasib Qureshi references this mentality throughout his articles that I've linked below. All highly successful people treat life, business, and success just like a nightclub. There are always three ways to get in. There's the first door where 99% of people wait in line hoping to get in. There's the second door where billionaires and royalty slip through. But then there's always, always the third door. It's the entrance where you have to jump out of the line, run down the alley, climb over the dumpster, bang on the door a hundred times, crack open the window and sneak through the kitchen, but there's always a way in. What that means is, is just like persistence. You have to keep going. You have to keep doing it. You have to keep showing up keep putting the energy out there and it'll come back to you. So some of the examples that Kreshi uses, he plumbed his network, he went to events, he went to meetups, you know, seeing where conversations go, not asking for referrals, but just being curious. And oftentimes people will just give you referrals just because you're curious. It's mentalities and mindsets like that where the energy starts to come back to you. When one door closes, you gotta go find a new one. So do anything that you can to be resourceful. That said, I'm not gonna get like too into the weeds of resume and LinkedIn land. I can try to find a sample resume and link it into the description below, but there's a ton of other videos on YouTube about this that I think outline how to do these things pretty well that I think that you can reference. I more so just wanted to talk about like mindset, which leads us to kind of the final step, which is interviewing. Another thing that Qureshi references, once you start to get those interviews, you don't wanna treat them as if it's like a do or die situation. You want to try to make it feel like you're watching yourself as you are interviewing. So it's kind of this like fly on the wall mindset. You want to try to let go of the outcome as much as possible and just focus on doing a really good interview. So once I shifted my perspective to align with this type of approach, that's where I really started to see the results come. I know it's difficult and it seems counterintuitive to let go of something that's like so important to you, but it allows you to be more present in the moment and allows you to see each interview experience as a better way to prepare for the next one. So it also sets this like stronger precedent for yourself as you are interviewing and continue to do so throughout your whole career in this industry. To be completely honest with you, like I don't have this like perfect formula. I'm just explaining to you what worked for me and the things that I learned throughout the journey and still some of the patterns that I see today, particularly the patterns that I see on YouTube. And I wanna save you the time and the energy. So if you feel like you connected with this video, throw me a like, subscribe, drop a comment. 
I'd love to hear what you think and go check out another video. I've got a bunch of others that talk about things like this. I appreciate your time today and see you soon.